Hi, I'm Kelly Malone with Stephanie Reed Real Estate, and this is the Voices and Views, where we celebrate the people and places that make the Wood River Valley so special. Today, we're gonna do something different. We are gonna talk about what it looks like when you're buying vacant property. So I get a lot of buyers who are entertaining the idea of building a custom home. So I wanna walk you through that so you can make sure to hit all of the key areas when you're doing your due diligence. Tip number one, identify the perfect property. Here you're gonna to wanna to think about your location, proximity to town, views, neighborhood, and all of the things that are important to you in finding your perfect home. Tip number two, make sure you read CCNRs and design review guidelines that run with the lot. Make sure that there are no rules and regulations that are gonna prevent you from doing what you wanna do on your property. Tip number three, understand lot setbacks and limitations. Some of the limitations that run with lots in this area are hillside slopes, avalanche, riparian areas, and the high water mark of the river or flood plain. Ultimately, it's gonna determine where you can place your house on the lot. Tip number four, submit for a perk test. If it doesn't hook up to the city water sewer lines, then you have to investigate what it looks like having a septic system on the property, which generally entails getting a perk test. Tip number five, get an estimate for a well. Again, if the property is located in the county, I always recommend meeting with a well driller, having them come out to the property and walk it and determine how deep the well is gonna need to be, generally tell you reach water and what those costs look like for you. Tip number six, utilities. So everybody wants power to their house, so it's important to determine where the closest connection is to the property and if there's gonna be costs attributed with bringing the utility to the lot. Tip number seven, conduct a soils test. On certain lots, especially on hillsides and areas of mixed soils, you're going to wanna to conduct a soils test to determine that the ground there is solid enough to hold a foundation because you're not gonna to wanna to build your dream house and then have the landslide or sink Tip number eight, interview architects. Find an architect who sees your vision for your build and for the lot. Understand what his costs are, make sure that he's available to do the project within your desired timeline. Tip number nine, meet the architect on site to determine if the property is going to work for the plan of the home. Oftentimes the plan ends up changing a little bit because the architect helps them see something that they might not have seen before. Tip number 10, interview general contractors. It's important to go over their average square footage costs, timeline, availability, and also ask them for some references and to tour some previous builds that they've done so you can get an idea for their craftsmanship. It's also important to have a good relationship with your general contractor because this is somebody who you're gonna be working with for a year. Tip number 11, make sure the project pencils. So once you've selected the site, you've found out where all the utilities are, you've done your soils test, you've met with the well driller, you've done your perk test, you've met with an architect, and you've hired a general contractor, it's important to then go through all of the costs of the projects, including the cost of the land, and make sure that it pencils for your budget and that it's a project worth continuing with. Now's the fun part. You get to break ground and start the project of a lifetime and build your dream home. So here at the Stephanie Reed Real Estate Team, we're always here to help you, give referrals for architects, builders. And we want your project to be a success and we want you to love your home. So please give us a call if there's anything that we can do to help you through this process. Good luck.